Well, hello folks, uh, my name is Charles Richard and uh, today I am bringing you a, a new video and uh, I'm going to talk to you today about the Fujifilm X-T4 and why I have chosen the X-T4 as my new video camera, my new favorite video camera and uh, not only for doing uh, the regular things that I do but also for street photography. With all these new upgrades and all the stuff that has come upon the X-T4, I think it is the camera that everyone should really, really think about getting because of the pricing and a whole bunch of stuff. So stay tuned because I want to talk about all of this right after this. Okay, great. Well, I'm back. I uh, switched a little bit uh, my uh, position. Uh, I'm in an area called uh, Winter Park, and uh, I went to uh, a place called uh, Trader Joe's. You know, I mean, I guess it's a pretty popular uh, nationwide. You know, they're uh, mostly, it's sort of like a supermarket, but they kind of tailor to organic food. And uh, lately, my uh, blood pressure has been a little bit high. And so uh, I've been drinking a lot of 100% uh, uh, grapefruit. That's uh, correct, uh, grapefruit juice. And uh, so I came over here to get me some um, organic uh, grapefruit juice. That's really good for the body. So if you have like a high blood pressure, you know, grapefruit juice is one of the um, natural drinks that uh, I very highly uh, recommend. Uh, it actually uh, has a lot of uh, benefits for it. Uh, you know, um, it, it's, it's incredible the stuff that you can uh, uh, actually that it can do. But let's get back to the uh, Fujifilm uh, X-T4. You know, you guys know that I've had just about every camera and uh, you know I've uh, used uh, a lot of cameras um, I bought myself uh, another a second uh, XT4 uh, uh, because the first one uh, I still have it you know but uh, I've uh, given uh, accessibility to uh, my pastor and he's using it to do a uh, Christian media so you know I don't want to take it away from him uh, you know, because that's the only thing that he has, uh, you know, and uh, it does a lot more benefit there. So I went out and I bought another one. But with that said, there's a reason why I did this. All right. And um, the reason, you know, that I did this is because, you know, yes, there is a, uh, a brand new uh, XH2S and uh, I did order it. But the truth of the matter is that my favorite camera is not going to be the X-H2S. Yes, it is more powerful than the X-T4. And yes, it is, it's got so much more than the X-T4. But it's not about the power, all right, that a camera has that makes it my favorite camera. Okay, my favorite camera is based on you know, does it make me want to go out and shoot? Does it make me want to, you know, pick it up and 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 use it? You know what I'm saying? The XH2S, although it is a super powerhouse and although it is a great camera, it just has nothing appealing for me that makes me want to pick it up. It kind of is the size of a DSLR. You know what I'm saying? And the object for me to come and use Fujifilm is because I wanted to downsize and I want that uh, retro uh, feel you know where you have all these dials that you can actually select that I can just look at the uh, camera and I can make my selections I don't have to be looking and searching through menus or pre-programming certain things to do certain stuff you know what I'm saying I don't like that you know what I'm saying I really do not like that the other thing that really did not uh, uh, sell me as far as making it my favorite camera is the fact that it doesn't have a setting for stills and movie uh, in other words a a toggle switch that changes uh, whether you want to do uh, you know set up your camera to do photography and then just click that switch to uh, movie right or video or videos right and then you have a completely uh, different uh, setup and when you have both of them programmed you can switch back and forth and you don't have to worry about pre-adjusting and adjusting the camera 
from video to photography you know so that's the other thing and uh, I got my XT4 right here you know and uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of things uh, that I've done to it and that I think that it is um, important right uh, that uh, uh, that you hear me out as to why I did these things because it might help you it might help you in a lot of ways they 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 might look like they're really small but they really are not that small because they really uh, help the, uh, the some of them help protect the camera and uh, some of them just make it uh, much more easier uh, to handle when you are doing uh, the run and gun thing well this is my xt4 all right it's a brand new I got a great deal by the way uh, and I'm, I'm all about great deals I got it brand new uh, I got it in a package deal which uh, came with the uh, it was the xt4 the body uh, it came with the battery uh, it came also with the uh, 18 to uh, 80 uh, millimeter uh, Fuji lens uh, which what I did okay because I don't like the 18 to 80 millimeter uh, lens was I took that lens and I sold it to a buddy of mine that actually likes that lens and I used that money to get me a, a brand new uh, Fujifilm uh, 56 1.2 now why do I say I don't like the uh, 18 uh, to 80? I think the lens is a really good lens, but it's just not my style of shooting. And I already have the 18 to 135. And in addition, right, I am going to be purchasing the 18 to 120, which is more video centric, right? And the focusing on the actual lens itself is all done internal. So you don't have the extension of the of the front of the lens and all that sort of stuff so it's much more better for video remember i am mostly uh use my cameras to do uh cinematography you know video i don't do much of uh photography but i'm getting into the photography because i like it you know i like it too and i like going out and i like shooting so this is my xt uh for uh when it first came out when i first got my original one i got it with the very first firmware version and it had its little torch just like any camera it doesn't matter if it's canon it doesn't matter if it's nikon sony it doesn't matter what camera it is when you first get your camera when it first comes out it's going to have issues and those issues sometimes is actually corrected through firmware you know through firmware updates now not always is it corrected through firmware updates because it depends on the company but Fujifilm is one of those companies that always corrects their cameras it's like a perfect example it's like the Olympus I'm not talking about OMD all right because OMD is new we don't know what they're what they are going to uh, be like you know what I'm saying uh, but I'm talking about the original Olympus a perfect example was the original Olympics the uh, EM1 uh, mark uh, 2 got a firmware update that when it got that firmware update it made it a brand new camera the focusing was different everything was different everything was wow super super stupendous excellent you know it was like a brand new camera Fujifilm you know and this tends to be something uh, within the Japanese culture Fujifilm does the same thing the XT4 with these updates that it has done in the firmware has made it pretty much a brand new camera the focusing when it first came out was all over the place so was the uh, uh, the ibis you know it was it, it just wasn't really there now all of this has been fixed with uh, firmware updates so right now i can i have no problems focusing with this camera i have no problems with uh with ibis now yes it is not going to be as fast as the new xh2s because remember the xh2s is a lot faster a lot faster because of the stack sensor and because of the stack sensor it gives it the capability to be so fast that even though the focusing might not be great 
it looks better than a Sony and better than a Canon because of the speed and that speed corrects it immediately. So with that said, let's get back to the X-T4. The X-T4 is one of those cameras that I think it's not a sleeper, all right, but it is just a so much underrated camera and I think honestly that the reason that it is so underrated is because people don't understand it. The menus of a Fujifilm camera are complex, you know, on the, on the more on the pro level side, okay, you know, and so with that said, you know, the complexity of this camera and how you set it up makes a huge difference whether or not the camera is going to act the way that you want it to. Now, not only that makes a, uh, a huge impact, but also what lens you use because not every lens is good for everything within the Fuji line because Fuji has been evolving and Fuji original, originally, excuse me, you know, was actually a camera that was meant for photography. So what that means that their lenses were really lenses which were made for photography. They were not lenses that were designed for video. They were not lenses that had in mind a continuous focusing. They were not lenses that, um, well, that, that were designed with that, that sort of intention, you know? And so lately, Fujifilm has been putting out lenses that are more video you know uh, centric or have or has video capabilities but with that said you know each lens that comes out I've noticed that each lens has differences you know differences because just like any company you know and that includes Canon, uh, Sony, Nikon it doesn't matter the evolvement of a lens when they design lenses you know, most of the lenses right now are using, they're not using real glass. They use what is called, you know, a, a sort of like a very high-end hybrid of a plastic, you know, lens, uh, you know, and, and, and a lot of companies are doing that, you know what I'm saying, specifically, uh, you know, uh, Canon and uh, Sony. Now, are they good? Well, you know, they're good, but in my opinion, I think that it shows, you know, when you have a lens that is made, that, that the, the glass is made out of pure glass, you know, or a lens that the actual glass is made out of a uh, hybrid plastic, you know. And so that's what I like about, about Fuji. And not all of their lenses, you know, give that uh, particular uh, feel. but. The 56 1.2 is one of those lenses. As a matter of fact, the 56 1.2 in the Fuji line is, I think, you know, it's tied, okay, as the sharpest lens that Fujifilm has. How sharp is it? It is extremely sharp. It is straight forward, you know, stupid sharp, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, why did I pick the 56? Well, I picked the 56 1.2 because of its flexibility remember i like to do you know cinematography and when i'm doing street photography you know if i were to put a lens that was maybe like a 23 or a 35 it means that i would have to be so much more closer to the subject that my subject sometimes you know actually um uh, um acts in a way that is not normal that is not natural because they see that i'm taking a picture of them or they see that you know that i'm taking a, a photo and it might not necessarily be of them it might be a composition of everything right but being that i am much more closer you know it it it's I, i'm more i am more noticed okay and in street photography i think that the trick about street photography is being unnoticed all right being able to take your photo where if there are people in that scene that they are actually acting in a normal and natural way right and so 
this is uh, important it's very important uh, you know in uh, being able to get uh, pictures that are uh, natural that have a a flow to it you know and uh, so I picked the 56 uh, 1.2 uh, I could have picked a 90. The 90 f2 is is the other lens that is tremendous, okay? Uh, you know, and, and it competes with the 56 1.2. But the focal range of the 90, you know, gives me, uh, it, it kind of limits me more, right? And, uh, you know, I think that the 56 is more of a lens that is more flexible because it's not either, it's a portrait lens, right? But I can do my focusing, you know, uh, if, if I want to, uh, you know, um, uh, move my zoom, right? If I had a zoom lens, right, I would get, I would walk closer to the subject. Or if I want to uh, zoom further away, I would, you know, walk further back from it. So because it's a 56 and I'm not so tight, it gives me more flexibility to be able to move, you know, to my subject right and so i think that is a um, a benefit okay for uh this 56 1.2 now one of the things that i always add on my cameras and um a, a guy on one of my um my recent posts he called it a donut what is that donut in front of your camera is i use this all right this here all right is a um uh, a lens all right that actually uh, is uh, one of those lenses right that is uh, or, or, or one of the things uh, one of these accessories right that is very uh, beneficial uh, to a lens this lens came with a plastic hood all right the plastic hood is great but the problem with the plastic hood that I find is that when you hit the plastic hood it doesn't really, you know, uh, I mean, you know, do anything to really protect the lens because although, yes, it might protect the front of the lens, you know, you still have a solid piece of plastic in front of your lens, which when it gets hit anywhere in the lens, it is going to transfer that shock to the lens, which could cause damage. This on the other hand because it is rubber it acts like a bumper you see it acts like a bumper so if it hits it's going to absorb the shock and it's going to create a much higher protection it's kind of like when you put a uh, your cell phone in one of those uh, heavy duty uh, you know uh, protection uh, cases you know that actually uh, has some sort of a shock you know absorption uh, to it you know it's it's that sort of a thing you know so this is the reason why I recommend you know if you're doing outside work uh, that you get a uh, rubber hood I like them you know not only is it collapsible but uh, also uh, it is uh, more extendable uh, let me see if I can get this here really quick uh, if you give me a second I'll uh, put this uh, on I, I gotta use both hands you know to be able to put uh, to put it on um, but I, I tell you you know it, it is it is awesome it really 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 I think it is uh, uh, a, a really awesome thing uh, to uh, uh, to have um, let me see. I got a, a um, I got an adapter ring all right it's called a step up ring really all right because this is a 72 uh, millimeter uh, that's another thing I always get it a little bit bigger because I also have other lenses and I have this one hood which also serves you know uh, the uh, uh, the ability right to be used uh, with uh, my my bigger lenses my bigger uh, cinema lenses now when I'm using a uh, a matte box you know and then obviously I will not be using uh, uh, this type of a hood but here's the thing all right you can see right here okay how it actually creates that uh, you know that cushion right but what's nice about it it's collapsible and then the other thing is I can extend it and when I extend it okay it extends you know quite a ways you know you know it extends quite a way so it actually protects my glare it's easily to, to it's easy to maintain it uh, you know uh, if I want to uh, um, um, 
you know, collapse it, you know, it's very easy to collapse and it's ready to go, you know. So this is one of the reasons that I picked this. Uh, another one is, you know, I picked this uh, leather, you know, um, uh, strap, you know, because I think it's, uh, uh, not only does it make it look, you know, really nice, uh, the camera, you know, but uh, I think that if you have a camera that is worth the body alone, well, here, this whole camera here is worth $3,000, you know, I, I, I think that you, you know, um, you should spend a little bit of money, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, not only uh, protecting it, but also making it comfortable for you. And this uh, leather strap is really, really comfortable. It's 100% genuine leather. It is stitched, you know. Um, I got it at a really, really uh, a good deal. But uh, but those are the things that I added. And of course, I added a polarizer filter, right? But getting back to the camera, you know, with this camera, you know, I chose the camera not only because of this capabilities, for video recording uh, the 4k video you know uh, being able to record 60 frames per second but many of you people don't know this okay many of you people don't know this and here's one thing that nobody I have not heard anybody you know mention uh, maybe because they really didn't dive into you know finding out about it but in slow motion this camera can do 240 frames per second and can do 120 frames per second now this camera is the only camera besides the new xh2s all right that can record okay that can record let's check, check this out that can record slow motion 240 or 120 at 10 bits Every other camera, I don't care what camera you talk about, records slow motion at 8 bits. I know, I know you didn't know this, okay? But uh, that's one of the benefits, all right, when you're doing uh, color grading and when you're, you know, uh, actually, you know, putting your stuff together, you know? And, but it's not a, a, a point that is important enough that was the reason why I chose this camera. The reality is that the flexibility of this camera, the size of this camera, which is really, really small, you know, and it's really, really, it's, it's a solid camera, you know, makes me want to pick the camera, makes me want to, you know, pick my Fuji, you know, and a camera that doesn't make you want to go out and shoot, a camera that doesn't want to make you want for, you know, that doesn't make you want to pick it up is a camera that is useless why spend so much money in a camera right if it's not going to make you want to go out and create and that's why this is my favorite camera right now and what made it my favorite is all the updates and on my next video i'm going to talk to you about all the updates that it has in more detail so that you can see the difference as my in, in my workflow all right and why this i think is a very highly recommended camera and yes i a lot of you guys might say that i'm biased because i'm all fuji film but at the same token you know i am a critical thinker and i teach critical thinking to you guys right so that when you make a decision you know you sort of you know be properly informed as to the things that you can do and then you can make your own decision whether or not you like the features that this particular product has you know versus another product personally i like fujifilm personally not only do i like the color science but i like my abilities to create my film simulations and i'm going to also uh, be talking about film simulations for cinematography uh, in my upcoming videos and I'm going to tell you how I make my camera look like films that you see today in the movie theater like Dr. Uh, uh, Doctor Strange or like the new Jurassic Park that I'm going to go see today or uh, any of these new movies that you look at the big picture and you look at the screen and you see wow look at the colors on that look at how beautiful it looks you know what I'm saying and I'm going to show you how I can create those colors within the camera 
without having to get into color grading or doing all this work you know using a, an editor all right so all of this uh, coming up so uh, stay tuned you know hang on if you haven't subscribed you know please go ahead and subscribe you know that way you can see when all my videos come up I haven't done a video for a, for a while and uh, well you know now uh, I did one um, outside you know it's kind of windy out here but it's nice and beautiful and it's fresh and I decided that I just wanted to kind of quickly post this video for you guys before I head out to the movies because I'm actually gonna go see Jurassic Park you know, uh, the mini, I think it's called the mini world or something like that. So anyways, uh, you know, until uh, next time, uh, take care, be blessed. This is Charles Richard, and I'll see you on our next video.